Hi everyone, this is Jerry. This is a game between Vladimir Kramnik and Magnus Carlsen. It was played in 2007 from the Dortmund tournament. Uh, I think it acts as a, a really good example of strategical play, so hopefully you take something away from this. Kramnik with white opens with the knight f3, Carlsen knight f6, c4 controls d5, e6 supports d5, g3 goes into the Catalan opening, the bishop will be on g2 and function well along the long light square diagonal. d5, d4, both sides establishing an opponent in the center and just continuing with development, bishop e7, bishop g2, and both sides castle. Next we have pawn takes pawn, uh, black gives up its only center pawn, so you better have a good reason if you're going to do this. So what's the, what's the reason that Carlson has a sign for uh, giving up his only center pawn? Well, black hopes to make it a little bit inconvenient for white to go ahead and recapture on c4. And in the meantime, also looks to solve one of the problems which is also, which is often present on the black side when white goes ahead and employs this Catalan system where the bishop is on g2 it often becomes difficult for uh, blacks light square bishop the one on c8 to do something constructive it would like to get to b7 but that can often run into some problems uh, what we do see here is queen c2 just looking to regain on c4 uh, black is best to not try and be greedy with b5 that will be punished with a4 this pawn is hit and if black tries to support it with a6 that's no good there's no time to recapture unless you want to lose your rook and if c6 that's no good either because after takes takes knight g5 does two things one the rook on a8 is hit and there's pressure against h7 because of the pressure against this point here there's no time to block this bishop's view of this rook. If knight d5, you save the rook, but you lose your king. In summary, after queen c2, b5, not good. Instead, a6, uh, a subtle looking move. Uh, what, what is its point? Uh, we'll see that shortly. After the queen recaptures, b5. Notice that a6 uh, is supporting this advance, and uh, the queen is being hit right now so although this diagonal is exposed for just the moment there's no time to make a knight move because of the pressure against the queen after queen c2 just in the nick of time black is able to solve its problem of getting this bishop to work it's now on b7 and functioning quite well unfortunately there's still um, there are new problems that black is faced with as a result of making this pawn advance there are now two weaknesses in the black position. More specifically on c6 and c5. Those are considered to be holes in the black position. They are squares which can no longer be defended by any black pawn. Uh, also this pawn on c7 is considered to be backwards since it's on a half open file. It's on a file where there are no white pawns but there is a black pawn present. This pawn here is considered to be backwards. Uh, what white will be looking to do from this position is make certain that this pawn does not get to c5. The reason for that is because it's a liability for as long as it's on the board. Black would like to exchange itself off for this d4 pawn. Black, white will try and prevent this pawn from advancing and only then attack it. It's kind of like you'll try and create a stationary target and attack it instead of having to cope with a target which can move first. So we want to make sure this pawn doesn't get to c5 and only then put pressure on it. Uh, so what we do see from here is bishop to d2. A couple things um, going on with this move. One, it allows the rook on f to play to c1 which will help out with that idea of uh, making it more difficult for this pawn to advance to c5. Also it allows the bishop to potentially come to a5 where once there it would be um, placing this pawn in a pin. Uh, what we do see next is knight c c6. Other moves that have been played from this position are bishop to e4 and also this rook to a7 move. A uh, little bit of an awkward looking move but it has its purposes. One purpose to defend c7 indirectly uh, also to get out of any problems that might occur with an attack on 
you know, from the a8 square and also vacating the a8 square for the queen to come to where from that square, if the queen is allowed to get here, she would actually be um, guarding e4 indirectly and putting pressure on the white position. So those are a couple alternatives from this position, this rook, rook to a7 and bishop to e4 move, but what we do see in this game is knight to c6, pressure against d4, and simply e3, just uh, defending d4, and now knight to b4, uh, and we, we have our first, uh, we have an imbalance now being created. Um, we have bishop takes knight, bishop takes bishop, so w black has the bishop pair, which is often a good um, thing to have in an open position. Uh, if black can get this advance in, exchange off its only liability, then I would be preferring black in this position since the position is opening up, you have the bishop pair, and there's really no other weakness going on. Um, however, from this position, it's still going to be difficult to get this pawn to c5. Um, what we do see from here is a3, just putting an immediate question to this bishop. Um, let's just take a look at a couple alternative moves. For example, knight c3, knight, or knight on b to d2. If knight here, notice how we could just play c5 right away. Um, again, focus on this c5 square. Our idea is going to be to uh, defend, to place our pieces in a way which is watching over this square. Um, if takes, we, we actually don't even have to recapture, we could make a move as black with rook c8, this pawn will fall, uh, we've eliminated our only liability, the c pawn, and the position has just opened up that much more, which is favoring the side, which is, which will often favor the side who has the two bishops, this position here, no exception. So, in other words, knight c3 here, not to be recommended, nor is knight on b to d2, because c5 can still be played. In the event of takes, rook c8. White can try all they like to hang on to this pawn, but it's not going to work. Knight, knight to b3 can be met with bishop e4, trying to chase the queen away from defense of this pawn. The only square can now go to is c1. And after a move like queen e7, this pawn will fall, and black is actually the side who's doing better here. So, neither of these moves, knight c3, or knight on b to d2 are to be recommended. Instead we have a3, putting an immediate question to the bishop. If it plays to a5, that's just going to make life that much more difficult for black. b4 will come with an attack on the bishop, and notice that from b4 we have an additional defender of this c5 square. So that's why we're not seeing bishop a5, but instead bishop to e7. Uh, the only other square is to d6 and maybe this is a tiny bit better uh, since it is watching over e5 in the event the knight comes here that knight can be taken but we aren't seeing that in this game instead knight to e7 and now knight on b to d2 uh, notice again we're, we don't want to come to c3 we're essentially if you do do that you're essentially putting a blindfold over the white queen she can't see these squares directly so knight here um, stays out of the queen's view of these squares and also has thoughts of coming to b3 where from that square would be watching over c5. So really this the main square in this game is this c5 square. Well these two uh, highlighted squares on c5 and c6. Next uh, rook c8 looking to just support to get this uh, uh, c5 move in but that stopped right away with b4. Uh, next, we have a5, trying to just undermine this pawn here. If we have white replying with a takes or b takes a, c5 can be played. Uh, this pawn will be recaptured, and black is actually better in this position. Uh, the rook is opposite the queen. The position has just opened up that much more. Again, the side with the uh, bishop pair is going to be the one that's likely better. Uh, instead of pawn takes pawn, we just have knight to e5, not, uh, not even worrying about the pressure against b4 right now. It's hit twice by the pawn and bishop, but uh, currently there's this issue where this bishop is being hit. And also the knight has thoughts of coming to c6, the other weakened square. So 
Again, both C5 and C6 are the weakened squares that white is focusing on. Uh, what we have is knight D5. Uh, an alternative is to first exchange these bishops if that's to occur, uh, and only then pawn takes pawn. This knight can come to C6, and it's doing a real lot from this square, hitting the queen, the bishop, and putting pressure on this B4 pawn. If the queen comes here with check, simply retreat, and there's no time to resolve the tension between these two pawns here since this bishop is not only attacked, but if it is allowed to get captured, it's going to come with uh, a really terrible fork against black. Uh, the queen and king will be forked. So that, that variation is no good. Um, in the end, this knight right here is going to be able to get to c6 if these bishops are exchanged. So instead we have knight d5 and now a really strong move um, knight to b3 ignoring the pressure that black is placing on this b4 point. There's three pieces attacking it only one defending it and white actually ignores it and doesn't even mind that this pawn here gets captured. This knight's uh, this knight moved to b3, its focus is to just get to a5, and once here, it'd be attacking this bishop. But not only that, it's also focused on c6. We have pawn takes pawn. Really, there's nothing better for black to do from this position than take on b4. And now knight to a a5. Again, hits the bishop, focusing now on c6. Bishop back, and knight on a to c6. Um hitting the queen, bishop, pressure against b4. There's no time to do anything between these a and b pawns just yet. Bishop takes knight, knight takes bishop, and only now queen to d7. Uh, two pieces are still defending this b4 point, and so white just simply removes one of the uh, defenders of the b4 point, and after recaptures only now only after a handful moves now is this tension between these pawns here resolved a takes b so after after the co after everything has kind of cleared up a little bit uh, what's the end result of all of this maneuvering that has occurred well this knight on c6 is just a, a giant monster really uh, from c6 it's guarding b8 d8 pressure on e7 uh, there are a lot of squares that it is taking away from uh, the black pieces, and uh, three of those pieces are of more value than the knight. So it's just a knight that's too deep in the black position. If you're allowing your opponent, if you're playing the black pieces here, and you allow your opponent, you know, to have a knight that's in your position here, um, you're really asking for some trouble, and. Uh, black is really in some trouble from this position you really have to be very careful when a knight is that deep in your position here and it's also worth noting that it's within checking distance of your own king uh, what we do have next is bishop or rook to e8 rook on f to e8 allows this bishop to come to f8 uh, another try uh, really won't work if if black tries to contest this a file with rook a8 that can be met with rook a5 and if the rooks are exchanged we recapture with this pawn and now we have a pawn which is just three steps away from queening um, rook a8 can be met with a6 and there's no time to take the pawn because of a fork and so if there's no time to take the pawn once on this square this pawn will move here next and just be one step away this knight is very deep in this uh, black position uh, black is very lucky to even draw such a position. Uh, we don't see this instead of um, instead of rook a8. We have rook on f to e8, and now rook to a5. Unfortunately, there's no way to stop uh, white from just grabbing this b5 pawn. The rook can't come here because the knight would grab it. So just bishop to f8, and now knight to e5. Uh, white could also just grab on b5 right away. Black might continue with the move like rook e6. The knight is hit twice. Uh, the knight also has to watch where it goes because the queen is um, placing the knight in a pin. Um, but white just avoids any potential for that sort of pin and just 
plays to e5, chases the queen away from uh, defending this pawn, queen e6, and only now grabs it. So white is really not giving black any chance whatsoever of putting putting white in an awkward position in a pin. Uh, next, rook b8, we have the exchange of a pair of rooks, and finally this c7 pawn falls with black following up with bishop d6. The rook was hit, the bishop defends the rook, um, another try, instead of bishop d6, if the rook takes this pawn, that'll run into rook to a1. Uh, notice that one of the drawbacks of recapturing or capturing the pawn that was on b4 is that you lose some control of your back rank, so it makes sense to want to uh, get this rook down to a8. And there's potential back rank mates in the air, especially since. Um, black hasn't made a flight square yet. White doesn't have to worry about that. There's a flight square for white. Um, so this is likely what would occur if the uh, black rook captures on b4 from here. Instead we have bishop d6 and just a queen retreat to a5 keeping an eye on the d8 square and uh, this pawn here as well. Bishop takes pawn was played if instead bishop takes knight, we have bishop, um, pawn takes bishop. If queen takes pawn, simply rook to d1. This pawn is hit twice, and there's no way to defend it again. The rook can't come here since the queen guards d8. So, in summary, this position here will have black now down uh, two pawns, and there's absolutely no counterplay. Um, this white king is perfectly safe here. So instead what we are seeing after queen a5 is bishop takes on b4 and it's hitting the queen but uh, white doesn't even have to react to that. Instead just places black in a pin. There's no time to take the queen unless you want to get mated with rook takes rook, etc. Instead queen d6 watching over b4 and b8 and after queen to a4 black ends up resigning and for good reason. Uh, White is getting ready to come to c6 where it attacks the rook and bishop if black tries to just get out of the pin right away with a move like bishop to c3 that'll run into just rook takes rook queen takes rook and after a move like queen to d7 uh, there's just too many problems for black to still solve not only is black down a pawn but this pawn is ready to fall this one's ready to fall and there's potential for back rank mates so as it went in this game uh, after queen d6, after queen d6 and queen a4, uh, black ends up resigning. So that's all for this video. I hope you're able to take something away from it. Take care. Bye.